Dante's Divine Comedy, Inferno, Canto the 27th. Um, I remember him meeting one of his idols, Ulysses, and wanting to talk to him. So, the double flame leaves, it moves on, and another flame comes up and approaches them. And he says, based on what Dante's saying, he thinks Dante might be new here. And he says, hey, do you have any recent news about Ramona? That's where I'm from, in Italy. Because, as we've established before, the spirits can see far into the future, but they can't see the present. But he asks, is Ramona per currently peaceful, or is it still at war? And he immediately goes on to explain this, the state in Ramona. First of all, he says, like, buddy, Ramona's always at war. However, he says, news isn't all bad, Ramona's currently standing very strong. It says that they've currently killed a mountain of Frenchmen. So I guess the French are the bad guys in this context. Hmm. I wonder I didn't what know. important war was going on between... Yeah, I didn't know what the French and the Italians were doing with each other at that huh. point, but... Interesting. He says it like it's a good thing. He does say, however, to sort of spoil the good news a little bit, it is currently very full of, like, tyrannical rulers and things like that. Probably so also not much of a surprise. There's one specific tyrant who he describes as being the one who changes his politics with the compass. Dante says, but what about you? Right, tell me a little bit about yourself. His name was Guido. We've seen a lot of Guidos on here. I think it's like a common... I think it's like the Bob of Italian. It, yeah, it must be. So, yeah. another guy named Guido, who I have pronounced Guido in the past. I apologize. Guido used to be a soldier for a time, but he began to think that maybe an occupation of killing wasn't the most holy of offices. Mm, yeah, so he retired to become a monk. The pope at the time was Pope Boniface VIII, and this is uh, one of the popes that Dante was not a big fan of. This pope had a petty dispute with one particular wealthy family, and he wanted them destroyed hmm. for no good reason. I mean, he had his reasons, but it wasn't a good reason. Basically what's happened is they've holed up in this castle, and Boniface can't do anything about it. And at one point, he comes to Guido, the monk, and he confides in him and says, please give me advice on how to destroy these people. Hmm. And Guido, he keeps his mouth shut. It's like, mm, that doesn't seem like a good thing to do. Not particularly holy or righteous. So he doesn't say anything. Pope Boniface says, all right, I can see you're hesitant. I forgive you in advance. <laughs> So this Pope straight up says, go ahead and sin, I forgive you in advance. <laughs> After all, I have been given the keys to heaven, and I can open and close them as I wish. This is like a whole other level of arrogance right there. It is certainly a low point. Not I think... to mention, there are several theological issues with this. So Guido is concerned that staying silent would be worse than sinning at the moment, so he tells him. And basically what he recommends is promise them something and then go back on your word. So he promises them amnesty, they leave the castle, then he comes and he destroys the castle while they're out of it, so they have nowhere left to run. Hmm. What Guido describes next is says, When I died, St. Francis came down to claim my soul. But before he could bring it to heaven, a black angel came and said, I'm going to read this. Leave him. Do not wrong me. This one's name went into my book the moment he resolved to give false counsel. Since then he has been mine, for who does not repent cannot be absolved. He turns to Guido and he says, Nor can we admit the possibility of repenting a thing at the same time it is willed, for the two acts are contradictory. It's an interesting thing for Dante to bring up in this. That isn't a really interesting issue that I've... I mean, it's true. You know? It, it, no, it is right? true, yeah. It's, it's... That, that defeats the point of repentance, because the whole point is that you're trying to turn away from what you're doing. And that your heart is changed, right in the right place. I think your heart's clearly not in the right place if you're doing it. Still, I think you know, repentance is one of those things we sometimes think about as being the words, right? Saying yeah. "forgive me," saying "I repent," and it's easy to think of it that way. But it's like imagine yeah. if you're watching a movie and there's these two characters, and the one says, "Will you forgive me?" And the second goes, "I forgive you," and then punches him in the face. It's clear mm. he hasn't forgiven him, right? Right. His yeah. actions contradict his words. Right. In the same way, you can say, "Oh, I repent of this sin," but if you're doing it at the same time, you are clearly not repenting. Your right. words are different than your actions. Yeah. Uh, that is the end of that canto. Hmm. 